Hey, good morning, or good afternoon, or whatever. This should be pretty short. I just want to finish up some of the ideas that we started on Friday. I don't actually recall if I... I think I gave you a couple problems. Maybe not. Anyhow, you'll have a little bit of homework at the end of this. So we're looking at normal distributions again, and then also uh, repeating a random variable and adding them up, and we're going to see how those fit together. And I just created a sequence of problems to work through. So, here's my problem. Uh, suppose the amount of soda in ounces in a can of soda is approximately normally distributed with a mean of 16 ounces and a standard deviation of 0 0.4 ounces. So let's remember what this means, what this looks like. So we've got a normal distribution, looks something like that, and the mean is 16. So right in the middle is 16 ounces of soda. This x-axis down here is going to be, here I've labeled it standard deviations from the mean, Zero, that's right at the mean, one standard deviation above, two standard deviations, three standard deviations above, so on and so forth. And then, um, so 16 ounces is the mean, and then since the standard deviation is 0 0.4 ounces, we get these bands that are 0 0.4 wide. So out here we've got 15.6 ounces, 15.2 ounces, 14.8 ounces, and then likewise the other direction, increasing by 0.4 ounces for each standard deviation. And if you remember, that means around 68% of the cans will be between 15.6 and 16.4 ounces, around 95% will be within two standard deviations of the mean, 15.2 to 16.8, and nearly all, 99.7%, will be within three standard deviations of the mean. So let's remember how to do normal CDF on our calculator. A couple quick questions. What percentage of cans hold between 15.9 and 16.2 ounces of soda? So if I picture this, if I draw that on the graph, um, remember that 16 is here in the middle. Each of these bands is 0.4 wide. So 15.9 is just a bit below 16. It's right there. 16.2 is halfway between 0 and 1 standard deviations away. A half standard deviation up. So I'm looking for the area between those two lines, and I can get that using my calculator. I go to distributions and then find normal CDF. If you don't remember where that is, have somebody show you in your calculator. The first two things I enter are the, the left hand bound, 15.9, and then the right hand bound, 16.2, and then I put the mean 16 at the standard deviation 0.4 and I hit enter, and the calculator gives me a decimal that I've translated to a percentage, 29.0%. So around 29% of the cans hold between 15.9 and 16.2 ounces of soda. What percentage of cans hold less than 15.5? So 15.5 is out here, it's a little bit more than one standard deviation below. I want to know that area. And so I do another norm CDF calculation. You'll notice my left bound, my lower bound here is now zero. Because it's going all the way down, just less than 15.5. So all the way down, all the way out here to zero. And then my upper bound is, where did it go? Oops, it's here, 15.5. Same mean, same standard deviation. Calculator tells me that's 10.6%. So that area there is 0 0.106. It's 10.6% of all the cans. So here's something new we haven't talked about yet. How much soda is in the heaviest 3% of cans? So what this is asking is you've got, up here, you've got the heaviest 3% of cans. 3% of the area is up here. And I want to know, what is, this, what is this cutoff value here? What, what is this here? And right, right here. What weight gives me 3% of the cans above it? Now I could do this by trial and error. I could do norm CDF. You know, start with a guess, comma, nine, 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 and enter it over and over again until I get closer and closer and closer to 3%. But that's a pain. There's a calculator function that does it for you. But unfortunately, the calculator function, it doesn't want to know the area above your cutoff value. It wants to know the area below your cutoff value. But that's easy. I mean, the whole area is 1. So since the area above is 0.03, then the area below is 0.97. So remember, this calculator function requires the area below a cutoff value. So if you get a problem that wants like the heaviest or the most, you have to translate that to uh, below the cutoff value. So, 
The calculator function is called inverse norm. It's in the distribution menu right underneath norm CDF. The first input is the important one. That's the area below the cutoff value. So that's 0.97 here. Since we had 3% of the area above, then that means 97% of the area is below this cutoff value that we're trying to figure out. And so we're going to tell inverse norm 0.97. Then we put the mean and the standard deviation separated by commas again. So area below a cutoff value, mean, standard deviation, and when you hit enter, it tells you the cutoff value. There it goes. 16.8 ounces. So right there, that weight of can that cuts off 3% of the area above, 97% of the area below, is a 16.8 ounce can. So that tells you that 16.8 can. Uh, the heaviest 3% of cans are 16.8 ounces or heavier. So how much soda is in the lightest 22% of cans? So again, we're looking for a cutoff value. Here's 22% of the area. And I want to know, oh, what's the can right here that cuts that off? Now this one, I already gave you area below. So that means you don't have to do any, anything besides go straight to inverse norm. You give it area below your cutoff value, 22%, 0.22. The mean and standard deviation you're working with, and that tells you that the cutoff value is 15.7 ounces. So that tells you that the lightest 22% of cans are 15.7 ounces or less. So that's inverse norm. Okay. Now, let's come back to repeating these random variables and adding them up. So, same thing, same can of soda, same mean of 16 ounces, standard deviation 0 0.8 ounces. But now we're going to select six cans randomly and independently. Basically, we're getting like a random six-pack of soda here. On average, how much soda will be in the six cans with what standard deviation? So, the average, the mean is straightforward. The mean for six cans is just six times the mean for a single can. So that's 6 times 16, so 96 ounces. So on average, this randomly selected 6-pack will have 96 ounces of soda. But not every 6-pack will have 96 ounces of soda. Some will have more, some will have less. And there's a standard deviation. And if you remember from the lecture on, on Friday, the standard deviation goes up by the square root of the number of cans. When you do a random variable, in this case the random variable is the weight in a single count of soda, and we do it over and over and over and add it up. The standard deviation goes up by the square root of the number of, of rep repetitions. In this case, we have six cans. So the standard deviation for six cans is the square root of six times the standard deviation. Of one count. Not six times, but the square root six times. It doesn't go up as fast as the mean does. And so the square root of six, the standard deviation was 0 0.4. My calculator, I get that's 0.98 ounces, so almost one. So what we have here is we have a new normal distribution. Here we're going to have the ounces in six cans of soda. So we see here's our standard deviation. Here's our, here's our normal distribution. The mean is 96. But not every, most of the packs are very close to 96 ounces. Most of the six packs are close to 96 ounces. But they're not all right at 96. Some of the six packs are on the upper end. Some of the six sacks are on the lower end, a little bit below 96 ounces of soda. And the standard deviation is 0.98. So we've got one standard deviation below, 95.02. Two standard deviations below, 94.04. Over here, one standard deviation above, 96.98 ounces, etc. So we can now do norm CDF and inverse norm questions with this new standard deviation with this new normal distribution rather than the, normal, the distribution for a single can. So that's what I did on F. What is the probability that our six pack will contain more than 97 ounces of soda? So 97 ounces or more is this area. 97 is almost exactly one standard deviation above. And so I do normal CDF. The lower bound for my shaded region is 97. The upper bound is just going forever, just put four nines. Lower bound is 97, upper bound is off forever. My mean is now 96, standard deviation is 0.98, and that tells me that 15.4% of cans will have 97, 15.4% of these six packs will have 97 ounces or more of soda in them. And that's it, that's the whole lecture. I give you a few problems to work on, these will be due on Wednesday. 
there they are. Um, enjoy. I'll see you Wednesday.